Welcome back to lecture 2. In this lecture, we will continue about the periodicity of elements in the periodic table. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to define the first ionization energy and second ionization energy, explain the increase in the successive ionization energies of an element, define electronegativity, explain the variation in electronegativity of elements across a period and down the group, and last but not least, you should be able to explain the acid-base character of oxides of elements in period 3. Let's start with ionization energy, which will be divided into three parts, first ionization energy, second ionization energy, and successive ionization energy. This diagram here represents the atom of element magnesium. As we know, magnesium has 12 proton number. This magnesium atom consists of 12 proton in the nucleus and also 12 electrons around the nucleus. There are two electrons in the first shell, eight electrons in the second shell, and two electrons in the outermost shell, or we call it as valence electron. If we remove one electron from the magnesium atom, magnesium ion will be formed. The magnesium ion formed now is left with only 11 electrons. Since the number of protons for element magnesium is the same, which is 12, Hence, the overall charge for the magnesium ion form after removal of one electron is positive 1. After the removal of the electron, the magnesium ion with the charge of positive 1 now is formed. There is attraction between the negative charge of the valence electron and the positive charge of the protons in the nucleus. Hence, the process of removing the electrons from the atom requires energy to overcome the attraction forces. This brings us to an important concept in chemistry called ionization energy. First, ionization energy. The definition for first ionization energy is the minimum energy required to remove one mole of electron from one mole of neutral gases atom from its ground state to form one mole of positive one ion also in gaseous state. We can represent this using an equation. This equation here represents the process of removing one mole of electron from one mole of neutral gases atom of X to form one mole of gases ion of X with a charge of positive one. As I said before, this process requires energy to remove electron from the atom. So, ionization energy is an endothermic process. Next, this example of equation shows the process of the ionization energy for calcium atom. One mole of calcium atom in the gaseous phase will form one mole of calcium ion with the charge of positive one when one mole of electron is removed from the atom. The ionization energy for calcium atom is 590 kJ per mole. When an ion is formed, energy is supplied to remove electron. There is one key idea that you have learned, which is the electron in atom are attracted to the positive of the protons in the nucleus. We have also learned that the removal of electron requires energy to overcome the attraction forces between the nucleus and valence electron. Logically, if the distance between the nucleus and valence electron is further apart, the nucleus attraction will become weaker as well.
Hence, we can say that ionization energy is largely influenced by the nucleus and valence electron attraction and also atomic radius. You have learned previously in lecture 1 that atomic radius itself is largely influenced by two other factors. The factors are effective nuclear charge across the period and also shielding effect when you go down the group. Generally, the trend of ionization energy is increasing across the period and ionization energy decreased down the group. This is because across the period, the effective neutral charge increased as the proton number of the elements also increased. The nucleus and valence electron attraction become stronger across the period, so more energy required to overcome the attraction forces, hence ionization energy increased across the period. Let's see what happened when we go down the group. As we know, down the group, the number of shell will increase. Hence, the electrons in the inner shell shield the electrons in the outer shells from the nuclear charge. This is called as shielding effect. So the nucleus attraction towards valent electrons will also become weaker down the group. Hence, less energy is needed to remove the electrons, so ionization energy will decrease down the group. Once we remove one electron, we can continue to remove electron and measure the ionization energy each time. Now, I'm showing you here the removal of one more electron, which is the second electron after we remove the first electron. This is called as second ionization energy. You need to pay attention to the difference between the definition of second ionization energy and first ionization energy. The definition for second ionization energy is the energy required to remove one mole of electron from one mole of positive ion in a gaseous state to form one mole of positive two ion also in gaseous state. We can represent this process using an equation. This equation here shows the second ionization energy for element X. When one mole of electron is removed from one mole of ion X with the charge of positive 1, an ion X with the charge of positive 2 will now be formed. Next, using the same element as before, which is calcium element, the second ionization energy for calcium is represented by this equation. One mole of electron is removed from one mole of calcium ion with the charge of positive 1 and producing one mole of gaseous ion of calcium with the charge of positive 2. The second ionization energy for calcium is 1145 kilojoule per mole. By now, we have learned about first ionization energy and second ionization energy. We saw that we can continue to remove electron and measure the ionization energies each time. These are referred as successive ionization energies. Here are the equations for the first four ionization energy for the element X. The first electron is removed from the atom X will form ion of X with the charge of positive 1 in the first ionization energy. And this is the equation that represents the first ionization energy. The second electron now is removed from one mole of gases ion of X with the charge of positive 1. When the second electron is removed, an ion of X with the charge of positive 2 will be formed. 
Consequently, the third electron is removed from ion of X2+. Plus. And after the removal of the third electron, an ion of element X with the charge of positive 3 is now formed. We continue to remove the fourth electron from the ion of X3 plus ion. And now, a new ion with the charge of positive 4 will be formed. The ionization energy shown is the same as the charge of the ion produced. For example, the third ionization energy produced ion with the charge of positive 3. And also, the fourth ionization energy produced the ion with the charge of positive 4. As you can see, when electrons are keep being removed to form more positive ions, the number of electrons will decrease, while the number of protons in the nucleus of element will remain the same. Hence, there is stronger attraction between the nucleus and the electrons that are left. Generally, successive ionization energy increase because electron is being pulled away from an increasingly more positive ions, and that requires more energy. The more positive ion will attract the remaining electrons with a stronger attraction. A drastic or sudden increase in successive ionization energy occur between the removal of the last valence electron and the removal of the first inner shell of the electron. Hence, the electron configuration of the valence electron for an element can be determined from the successive ionization energy data. In the next slide, we are going to look at what successive ionization energy tells us about how the electrons are arranged in an atom. This table here shows the successive ionization energy for elements in the period 2 of periodic table. We can see that the ionization energy always increase in the order of second ionization energy, is larger than first ionization energy and the third ionization energy is larger than the second ionization energy and so on. The same trends are observed for all elements across the period from lithium to oxygen. As we can see, the second ionization energy is always greater than the first ionization energy Third ionization energy is greater from the second ionization energy for all of the elements here. Remember, we have learned that removing electron from the more positive ions require more energy. That is why if we keep removing the electrons from the element, the ionization energy will keep increasing. This successive ionization energy data actually will tell us about how the electrons are arranged in the atom.